Miss Violet. I'm going to be introducing you to some of the jams we have here, and I'm really excited to show them to you because we have a really wide selection, and um, I'm a jam person myself, so I'm excited to show this to you. Um, one of the first things I have is just a classic raspberry jam. So this is raspberry preserve specifically. Um, it's not a jelly, it's a jam. It has, um, you can see, loads of little seeds on the inside from the raspberries. Um, if you open it up, I have one that we've been eating here. I'm just going to open it to you because... Like, so you can see on the inside, it's a very sweet, sticky kind of jam. It tastes just like raspberries. And for me, this is a really nice alternative to just a plain strawberry jelly or, or raspberry jam or grape jam. Um, I prefer preserves because there's more of the, um, the natural fruit taste, which I think is much better than just gelatin with a little bit of raspberry and food coloring. So we strongly favor preserves and jams here over jellies. Sorry, that's the dog. Um, another kind of classic, well, take on a classic, this is um, a pure seedless raspberry, sorry, black raspberry preserve. So this one has no seeds in it, but it is still a jam, although it looks like jelly. Um, you can see it's very smooth at the top. And I like black raspberry, black, right, black, black raspberry preserves. I, I oftentimes prefer them to um, plain raspberry preserves because to me it gives just sort of an interesting dynamic. And black raspberries have this sort of summery taste, which I think just suits bread really well. I often have this for breakfast with um, bread and some ricotta cheese. It goes well with mild cheeses, although it's also quite good, quite good with goat cheese. Um, so you know, cheeses as a complement, jams and jellies, I think is a really interesting dynamic. So it makes a really great breakfast have some bread and some cheese and some jam. It's got some fruit and some protein in it. Got some starch and sugar. Can't go wrong with that. So I, I really I really like black raspberry jam and I think if you're kind of looking to diversify your jam and jelly collection, it's a good place to start if you're into experimenting a little bit. Um you know to me I think the two of these together should be a staple. Um, I think that you should have two types of raspberry preserves. Just because, I mean, raspberry, it, it's, it's iconic. And I think strawberry is also, is also quite good. I don't happen to have any here at the moment, but strawberry is another good one. And, you know, I, I think I just prefer raspberry because it's less of a it's less of a sort of one-dimensional taste. So I think strawberries, it's very sweet and very fresh, but raspberries are more complex. You know, there's, there's hints of stronger flavors, interesting texture too. So I, um, I just think that if you're starting out, these are a great duo to go together. And black raspberry jam with peanut butter is quite good, quite good. Also, just plain raspberry jam, peanut butter, or honey or something. Quite good, quite good. Here is something a little bit more out there, which um, if you are at all familiar with the Nordic countries, you may have heard of. These are lingonberries. Um, you can see by the blue and white, these are a product of Sweden. Um, it's, um, it's a really unique taste. It's much tartar. It's much tartar than um, most jellies that I think a Western audience is familiar with. Uh, I mean, America, West. 
but um, they taste and smell a little like cranberries, but they're they're not quite as sweet, in my opinion. Um, this, it, it's, I'm, I've never been to any of the Scandinavian countries, but I hear it's, it's, it's common there, as well as currants. I've never had currant jelly. I wonder if that's a thing. Anyway, currants are little red berries, but lingonberry spread is is one of my favorites because it, it just adds such an interesting punch of flavor and it and it's tart. So it goes well with sweet flavors. Um, it's really good on turkey, actually, in the same way that cranberry sauce is good on turkey. But if you want to just give a savory flavor, a little more of a dynamic. Lingonberries are a great addition. It's quite good on salads. Um, I have lingonberries like every other day. This is one of my favorites, favorite, favorites. Um, so if you're into something and are into a little bit of an adventure, lingonberries are a great place to start. And um, this lingonberry jam by Felix is kind of cool because if you can see on the inside, those are I mean, they look like whole berries, so it's not um, it's not a heavily processed jelly or you know, spread, whatever. So it's a good, it's a it, it's beautiful too. The color of it is just this great rich red, and then I find that this makes a really good gift um, if you are making a basket for somebody and you want to avoid the sort of cliché type preserves, marmalade, what have you. Lincoln berries are a great alternative. I quite like them, so I can recommend them. My last um, sort of jelly jam type of thing before we move on to the chutneys is um, this is fig spread. I love fig spread. It's a great flavor. I don't know if you've ever had anything that is figgy, but um, it's it's it smells a little bit like raisins. Honestly, it doesn't really taste like raisins because I don't like raisins. But um, it's really it's got. I know it, it just is a great it's a great addition especially to cheese um, I make paninis quite often usually with some sort of cheese and jam and you know whatever on top um, and fig spread and ricotta cheese and honey and walnuts is it's not of this earth it's so good um, so I can strongly recommend fig spread if you want a flavor that goes well with cheese and wine appetizers. It's great. It's another one. It's a bit like lingonberries, and it, it's also pretty good with meat. Um, if you want to make a glaze of it, um, it's just a really savory, rich flavor with an interesting texture. And um, we also have available apricot fig spread, which is a little bit more sweet, um, but that is also really nice. I like to have fig spread on goat cheese and ricotta cheese. Also, um, on boursin cheese is quite good. Uh, boursin is like an herbed cheese kind of spread. Um, you can get it at grocery stores. Um, fig spread is hard to find, in my experience. I look all over, but your best bet is... Oh, excuse me. Fig spread is hard to find. Um, you can find it occasionally at um, more common grocery stores. I've seen it at, um, you know, various places, but your best bet to find fig spread is the like, organic grocery stores, Whole Foods, that type of place, co-ops, markets. Um, if you can get fresh preserves, you are a lucky person because I can't get them here. You can also order these online or from us. But, uh, yeah, fig spread. It's one of my favorites, and I think very underappreciated. It's good with fruit, too, if you want to add sort of a more rich flavor. Um, we're going to move on to 
um, relishes and preserves, uh, excuse me, relishes and uh, chutneys. So the first thing I'm going to show you is sweet Vidalia onion relish. Um, Vidalia onions are a, a type of onion which is very sweet. It's, it's not kind of make your eyes water type of onion and it doesn't give that punchy flavor. This is very mild. Um, it, it just gives a little of that onion taste, but it also has, you know, some other, other additions. So, you know, this, within this particular one, you know, there's like red onions, um, I think garlic type of thing. So it's, it's pretty strong, but this is another one that's great on sandwiches. This with turkey or chicken, um, I wouldn't recommend like, beef with this, although it wouldn't be bad. Um, ham would be good with this. You do a layer of this and maybe some arugula and some meat or, you know, what have you. I've had this with cheese, too. It's not my favorite, but it's pretty good. There are people who are pretty into the daily spread, so I have, I have two here. This one is a relish, so it's got other things sort of, not pickled, but cooked in with it. This one is just Vidalia onions and some herbs. So, um, you know, it depends on what you like. So this is by Braswells, and this one is by Boar's Head. Personally, I like the Boar's Head. It is more expensive, and it's harder to find. Um, but not, not really. I mean, they have it in most places. But Boar's Head in general makes really, really great spreads, and their jars are just great. Um, so you can get Vidalia onions prepared lots of different ways, or if you just want Vidalia onions, they do sell them at the grocery store. But yeah, I can recommend Vidalia onion spread. My mother is very, very much in love with this. We have several of these at home, and um, we go through them. She puts them on everything. Um, I'm going to move on to the first of the chutneys that I have. I have two here to show you. This one is an apple cranberry chutney by Stonewall Kitchen. Um, Stonewall Kitchen make a lot of types of these. They make um, they make good sauces and spreads. This brand, um, another kind of specialty, you'll have to go to an organic food store typically, depending on what grocery stores you have local to you. But um, this is apple cranberry, and it's prepared with lots of other things. So there's cranberries, onions apples, brown sugar, cider vinegar, raisins, apricots, balsamic vinegar, ginger. My gosh, so much stuff and lots of spices. So this is just a good sort of mixed up spread. And this is amazing on sandwiches. I would eat this raw. Yeah, so there's a lot of ingredients and they're all quite tasty. Um, I find this is it's very savory. So apples and cranberries, uh, the apple gives it a very tart flavor, which expands really beautifully in your mouth. But you know, cranberry is a, is a tart is a tart berry, um, and um, so you know you do get sort of an interesting balance of that strong flavor and that sweet flavor, which I think is very interesting when you're eating it. So. You know, for me, this is one of my favorites. I'm, I'm a jellies girl because I'm, excuse me, I'm a jam girl because I'm, I have a sweet tooth. Um, so this suits me very well because it, it's, it's nice and sweet, but also a little tart. Next one I'm going to show you, and the last one I'm talking about today, is this mango chutney. Um, Mango chutney is some of my favorite. You can make fresh mango chutney, but it won't be kind of spreadable like this. So, um, a, a standard fresh chutney would be mangoes and cilantro and some peppers, that type of thing. And um, here, Stonewall Kitchen has taken that and boiled it together to make a spread. So this is great because it um, it's so sweet, but it's 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 complex it's not a just a mango preserve which is very exotic by the way if you've ever had it um this is a chutney so it's 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 good on sandwiches but it's even better on meat um 
you know, you can you can add it to any kind of meat. Any kind of meat. It's good on just about anything. And it'll add a lot of flavors that meat alone doesn't have. So, you know, meat is a grounded, sort of earthy flavor, but this is kind of springy and light. And, and it really, you know, dresses up what would otherwise be quite a plain meal. Um, you can cook your meat with this spread on it and have it sort of absorb into the meat, or you can add it on top. You can use it as a salad dressing. It's also um, good on rice. Chutneys are good on rice. Um, so I can recommend just really experimenting and getting to know different spreads that can add a lot of dynamism to your food. Because I think the standard kind of American food can get quite bland, quite bland, very quickly. So the addition of various spreads is just a really fun way to experiment. And because they're preserved, they do last quite a long time. So, you know, from jams to jellies to preserves to spreads to chutneys, you do have a lot of options. And I think that, you know, if you are a foodie like myself, then it's a very exciting world to explore because they, they preserve just about anything. Canning is one of the oldest cooking arts that I know of. My, my great-grandma used to can in our kitchen and the whole house would smell like strawberries. <laughs> it was wild. But, yeah, I mean, you know, now that we're in an international age, it's really exciting to be getting preserves from foreign countries, new flavors, new additions. It's, it's changing all the time. So it's, it's very exciting, I think, and I would really encourage you to have a look around and pick out some spreads that you like and take them home with you because it's a brave new world and spreads are just some of my favorite things. So thank you very much for meeting with me today. I hope you have a good one.